Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, unfortunately, won't see you till Monday. Uh, I just wanted to go over so, a few more things. I have an assignment for you tonight, political cartoon activity. I uh, so also want to talk about the assignment for Friday that's going to be due. It's going to be called the Ideal Upper Dolphin Area High School. So I'll get into that more tomorrow with a video lesson, but you're going to be creating a presentation. You're going to record that presentation. I advise you to upload it to YouTube so you can just share the link right to the assignment post. I think that's the easiest way to submit presentations. And if you submit that presentation, you don't have to send me your slides because I can see your slides from your presentation. So you don't have to be in the video just your slides okay that's it so i like you guys if you want to you can work with a partner just make sure you're specific on who you're picking right just make sure you detail to me who your partner is that you're going to be working with so you want to you can zoom with your partner google meets facetime whatever you want to do but i need to see your slides as you're obviously presenting the information okay so again you don't have to be in the video just the presentation of you, that, of what you're giving about your slides. Okay, again, that's for Friday, all right? So I'll talk about that more tomorrow in tomorrow's video, but I just wanna give you a heads up. Also, next week, we'll have a review to on Monday, and then Tuesday, we'll have the test for the first chapter, the Progressive Era. We're moving along pretty well. Obviously, it would be a lot better if you're here. So real quick, here's the bell ringer for today. Detail the hardships that African Americans faced during the, er, the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s in the U.S. Describe key progressives and their beliefs for advancement for African Americans and American society. So just like always, if you want to, you can pause the video. I'm about to go over it here soon. So hardships that African Americans faced. So obviously after the Civil War, um, after the Emancipation Proclamation, all the slaves were free, and it was really hard for African Americans to um, gain opportunities in society, especially in the South. Okay, we'll talk about that great migration here a little bit when we get to the 1920s, but again, more people migrating to the urban areas, to these cities for better opportunities, workplace opportunities, maybe education. So African Americans, huge migration to the North, okay, obviously because the South uh, really was holding on strong to these, these uh, ideals of separate but equal. That's kind of what really kicks everything off. That Plessy versus Ferguson court case in 1896, how African-American Plessy wanted to try to, uh, wanted to, try to uh, ride a train car, and uh, he bought a ticket. He wanted to travel, obviously, to, I think it was New Orleans, and uh, he was trying to ride in a white train car but the seats were all destroyed it really wasn't a great environment for him and uh, because of the cart was destined for african-americans they he didn't want to sit there right he bought the ticket like everybody else why does he have to sit in a place or even stand where the, the cart's really destroyed right there's no seats it's really going to be uncomfortable for him to ride in that cart so he decides to ride in the, the white only cart and this caused a huge uproar and this was one of the court cases that symbolized what would occur for African-Americans in society moving forward, okay? And trying to keep U.S. segregated, right? Meaning that African-Americans and white citizens in the U.S., they had different opportunities, had different um, public services, capabilities, okay? And uh, it was designed to be equal, but in all reality, we all know it was not equal. Okay, so this court case pushed this separate but equal mentality. And we all know with the public facilities like, let's say, schools, education, these opportunities like that, uh, public transportation, it really wasn't equal whatsoever. Okay, the white society had the best advanced um, public services, while African Americans did not have that luxury whatsoever. They kind of got the leftovers in a way. And there's many examples that you can talk about with restaurants, right, with different types of forms of transportation, school, academics, you name it. All right, so some of the other issues that African Americans faced was uh, in society, especially in the South, some in the North as well, literacy tests. I hope everybody tried out that literacy test. 
I think it's really interesting. I checked out the video from yesterday with uh, uh, these African Americans needing to pass this literacy test in order to vote. And it's impossible to pass. It's ridiculous, the, the questions that are asked. And that's why I include that video of Harvard students try to take it because it's really impossible. You can't. Um, even if they for somehow passed this literacy test, they were met by a white mob at the voting booths. So these individuals, they didn't have the same opportunity whatsoever. And uh, really tried to, the white citizens tried to push this minority group from gaining the same opportunities and equality in the United States. Also, the KKK forming right around this time at the end of the Civil War to make sure that African Americans, minority groups, they're still outcasts, that they're pushed to the side. They're not equal as the white citizens. And it's very unfortunate. Lynch is occurring and happening all across the United States, not only in the South, but in the North. So key progressives that try to advance society, advance opportunities for African Americans. We talked about W.B. Du Bois. How we believe that academics was the way that uh, segregation, that this division in the United States would be, uh, would end, right? To try to bridge a gap here, to try to end segregation and benefit all Americans in society. And W.B. Du Bois believed education, academics, okay? If African Americans can sit at a table with white citizens and talk about politics, talk about the lot, you know, really, really what's going on in current events, then that eventually will bridge the gap. Booker T. Washington talked about vocational skills, workplace skills, okay? And he believed that individuals working together can end these hardships, right? End segregation. And so if African-Americans are in the workplace with white citizens, they'll form a relationship, form a bond, and that would end um, this division in the United States. So those are two key progressives that I talked about uh, yesterday, and obviously the hardships many African-Americans faced. And uh, we'll talk about the advancements even through World War I as African-Americans were getting involved with the war and even World War II. And still, not a lot of progress, right? Even with all these movements, even with uh, W.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, try to advance. Um, it really was in American culture, this separate but equal mentality from 1896, that Plessy versus Ferguson uh, court case. And uh, that won't really change until the civil rights movement in 1965. And we know today with a lot of uh, the social justice issues in the United States that's constantly brought up. All right, and um, with that being said, we talked about a group, the NAACP. So the National Advancement, or sorry, the National Association for Advancement of Colored People, how that group formed to gain more opportunities for African-Americans to try to better American society as a whole. All right, guys, hopefully you got that reading done from yesterday. Okay, uh, today I want to transition and talk about the square deal. Teddy Roosevelt, as he's becoming president of the United States, how he's going to advance American society uh, and try to fight for progressive movements and help the middle class, establish a middle class, and uh, try to eliminate the control the wealthy elite business owners had on American society. So real quick. Here are the terms for today. We have Theodore Roosevelt, the Square Deal, the FDA, a monopoly, not the board game, Trust Buster, and the National Reclamation Act. So I'll give you some time, write those terms down. Again, when we have the exam, the test, this, these are the last terms here. Please submit your vocab terms. I'll have a Dropbox for you where you can submit those terms and we should be good. Right, we should have, uh, that should be easy points for you. But again, that's your study tool along with the bell ringers. So these are the last set of terms that you'll have for this chapter. So once you have those down, okay, you can pause the video, write down these definitions. That would be great. And then we can stay in progress with the lesson. All right, so today I wanna to talk about Teddy Roosevelt and the square deal. Okay, so we'll talk about leadership in the 1900s more next chapter. This kind of sets the stage for America as it's rising as a world power. And we'll mention Teddy Roosevelt as well when we get to emerging world power. We'll backtrack just a bit to understand how Teddy Roosevelt became a strong leader in the United States. And obviously what we were going to talk about today, president of the United States. So Teddy Roosevelt, the Robin Hood president. Why? Well, 
they describe him as the person that's going to take a little bit from the rich and give to the poor, give to the middle class, but not just the poor, the people that work for it, the people that try to advance their lifestyles in the right ways. Okay, he's just not giving free handouts out. He is actually going to give it to the people that work, giving equal opportunities for everybody that deserves it. Right? So again, he's just not handing money out to people willy-nilly like. No, he's going to make sure that people work for it, and uh, those who work for it will gain those opportunities. Here's a picture of Teddy Roosevelt in his younger age. Uh, again, next chapter, we'll talk about his Rough Rider days in the Spanish-American War, which leads up to him becoming a huge, huge figure in American history, which obviously result into what we're talking about today with his presidency. There we go. Sorry. Square deal. Make sure you guys know the square deal. This is his idea, his uh, policy, okay, with gaining opportunities, giving opportunities to the middle class, establishing a minimum wage, which we'll talk about, and advancing society for all Americans. Okay, no longer can these business owners, these huge industrial giants like we talked about with Rockefeller, uh, Carnegie, and uh, who we talked about with uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, they're not running politics, right? They're not running the United States. We need to make sure we have public officials, representatives fighting for the people's rights, not just the select few business owners. All right, so real quick, the three C's. Make sure you guys remember this. The three C's to the square deal. Number one, consumer protection. All right. And we can thank we can thank uh, we can thank uh, Upton Sinclair and his jungle for bringing about these ideas, these problems in the meatpacking industry. OK, how they caused a lot of uh, turmoil for many people. Right? And many people dying of dysentery, sickness, disease because of the poor conditions. So consumer protection, we'll talk about the FDA here soon and how the FDA was established to make sure people knew what they're consuming. So any item that you see within the grocery store, you can see a label, nutritional label on the back of it, and you know exactly what you're going to be, oh, what you're going to consume, what you're going to eat. There's expiration dates on these items, so you're not eating or drinking spoiled uh, products, right? So consumer protection coming around right in the early 1900s under Teddy Roosevelt's presidency, making sure people are protected and understand what they're about to consume. Uh, people with allergies, right, obviously, uh, need to know what they're about to consume and eat. So consumer protection, that's that first C that you need to know. Control corporations, that's the second C. So controlling corporations, Teddy Roosevelt, he wanted to make sure that these monopolies don't become too strong, that these business owners don't control and dictate what goes on in the United States, everything, right? So he believed that the government needs to step in and to make sure that private industries, smaller industries, smaller businesses have an opportunity to survive, right? In order to uh, produce the goods and uh, make a living for many Americans that want to try and create their own items, create their own livelihood with their small business. So making sure these bigger corporations don't buy up everybody and that they don't um, become too competitive where they really take their competition, these smaller businesses out of the field. So he wants to try to control corporations and they call him a trust buster, right? He's breaking down these monopolies. A trust is another name for a monopoly and uh, how these bigger businesses need to be regulated. So again, coming out with regulations, setting a minimum wage is huge for Teddy Roosevelt, right? We'll talk about that here soon and making sure these middle-class workers have the ability to live, right? And have the ability to afford products and goods that they can afford and that they can utilize for their family and uh, obviously to raise the standard of living. And then finally, last one, conservation. Teddy Roosevelt was huge with the environment. He wanted to make sure that these national parks, these state parks were created, that people can learn about the habitat, about the environment, and to protect it. Through this vast industrialization in the United States, it was vital that the U.S., Teddy Roosevelt, wanted to make sure that these, the, the America's natural beauty was preserved and that these industries wouldn't just strip the landscape of the United States and totally take away the resources, natural beauty that America has, right? So many national parks were created all across the United States. Okay, you guys know Valley Forge, I'm sure, huge in the Revolutionary War. Yellowstone National Park, okay, big for Teddy Roosevelt as well. So again, Teddy Roosevelt fighting, making sure that these are all preserved and uh, the natural 
beauty of America can be seen by everybody. And that indus in industries and industrialization doesn't take hold too strong in America. He saw what was going on in Europe, right? We can't allow that to happen in the United States. All right, so again, rich and poor have equal rights. So he's not just giving away free handouts. He's making sure that people that work, that do their best to become obviously a strong U.S. citizen, that they gain those similar opportunities. So here's a famous quote by Teddy Roosevelt. When I say I believe in a square deal, I do not mean to give every man the best hand, meaning he's not just going to give money out to people. Right? He's not going to say that he's going to give everybody the best opportunity um, to, to obviously be very successful. It just happens if you work for it, if you're in the right situation, you'll gain that. If good cards do not come to any man, or if they do come, and he has not got the power to play with them, that <clears throat> is his affair. All I mean is that there shall not be no crookedness in the dealing. Saying that these business owners that controlled really society, right, they aren't going to dictate what happens for average Americans. That even though he's a leader, the president of the United States, he's going to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to become a, uh, a success, right? Only if, obviously, they work for it. They work at it. Okay. So Teddy Roosevelt. So moving on, trust buster. So a monopoly, right? Teddy Roosevelt wanted to try to fight these industrial giants, fight these big business owners, and break down what they had established in the U.S., OK, and uh, really how they're controlling society. Um, yes, capitalism. Yes, big business is good to an extent. But when they're setting the wages to a point where there's no rival, there's no competition, when they are literally paying off public officials to continue their hazardous actions, these uh, unsafe conditions in the workplace, and something needs to be done. And Teddy Roosevelt, these public officials come out and they try to control uh, these corporations from becoming too much of a really a crooked influence in people's lives, right? So that's what it means by a trust buster, a, a person that's taking down these monopolies, these bigger businesses that are controlling everything in society. A good example I give, let's say a monopoly, right? Pizza Hut, awesome. I love it. We all know here in Eville, there's many different pizza places around. You have Pizza Delight, you have JoJo's, you have Schiano's. Uh, Chow is down, way down in uh, uh, Likens. And then I love Primus, I love Legends, down in Valley View and Higgins. Let's say Pizza Hut decides, you know what, because we're a bigger corporation, uh, these mom and pop shops here, they're going to come in and buy out all the competition. You're just going to have Pizza Hut all throughout the valley. Again, I don't mind Pizza Hut, I like it. But at the same time, there's unique tastes that these pizza shops offer that if it's bought up by a monopoly of bigger businesses, there goes your unique taste, right? There goes your community um, ties to that business, that said restaurant. I know for Primas especially, I grew up on it. Right? I love the owners. They're awesome to me. Uh, a lot of times they just gave me the pizza, gave me a cheesesteak, and it was so, so cheap. You couldn't believe it. And uh, I just grew such a connection to that restaurant. And uh, if, let's say, a bigger corporation would come in and buy it, you lose that connection. You don't have the same workers there. You don't have the same idea of like, hey, you did a lot for the community. You had a good, for me, it was like with wrestling and football. You had a great game. You had a great match. Take the pizza. It's on us. Uh, with that being said, with Pizza Hut coming in, you won't have that. All right. So Trust Buster, like I just mentioned, so Trust Buster is really one big business, and they're taking over many of these smaller businesses, okay? So with the trust. A trust buster like Teddy Roosevelt, he's trying to break out, break apart these monopolies, these bigger businesses, and allow opportunities for the smaller business to, to thrive. Okay, so you have your Schianos, you have your JoJo's, you have your Pizza Delight, you have your you know, Legends and Primas, and they can thrive and they can compete against one, one another. But we're not having one larger business, one larger corporation, restaurant like Pizza Hut just coming in and taking over all of them. And then if you think about it, if they do take over all of it, they can set the prices at whatever they want because that's the only source of pizza you have. So again, trust buster, Teddy Roosevelt wanted to make sure he could eliminate that, make it more affordable for the people, raise their standard of living and give that unique private business uh, feel atmosphere that 
everybody desires and wants and needs. All right, so Roosevelt's Acts, Meat Inspection Act. So after Upton Sinclair's The Jungle is presented about these harsh conditions in the meat industry. I know I mentioned that quite a bit already with the rats and the mice and the, uh, the waste and the feces inside the meat. And uh, if someone lop off their finger, they would just combine it all together into meat. Hey, maybe we should sanitize that. Nah, I'll clean it up later. The blood's all over the meat already. Package it, send it off to the grocery store, the restaurant. Someone will eat it. Nope, not anymore. Roosevelt, he stopped it. After reading The Jungle, after the muckrakers presented what was going on in American society, it's like, you know what? We need to make sure that we have regulations, that government steps in and makes sure that these restaurants, these businesses, these grocery stores are following the code regulations, the guidelines that the government sets out in order to protect the consumer. Part of the three C's, right? There you go. Okay, along with control corporations, the trust busters, like I just talked about. So Pure Food and Drug Act, government controls other foods and medicines. So you get to see exactly what you're about to consume, labels on every item, okay, on your prescription drugs, okay, making sure that you're not consuming too much of it, which might cause an overdose, right? So to protect the consumer, have amount be used, the, the directions on, on everything, on, on, the, on the vial, okay? And uh, with that, making sure that the grocery stores, these restaurants are following code to make sure the consumer is protected. <clears throat> so the FDA Food and Drug Administration, they're like the food police, sending health inspectors to restaurants, grocery stores, making sure they're following code to protect you. All right, finally, the last one, conservation. Last C, conservation. Teddy Roosevelt created all the, helped create and establish that a lot of these natural beauties, these state parks, these national parks are protected to preserve the environment. That industrialization won't just take hold in the United States and get rid of, really, America's natural beauty. So this land was set and pretty much, you almost say bought by the United States and protected to prevent any type of I guess you'd say civilizations forming, stripping it of its natural beauty. Okay, so you can go to Yellowstone National Park. Valley Forge is a cool one, not too far from here. If you haven't gone there, check it out. Yeah, it's pretty cool, obviously, the battle. The battlefield and Revolutionary War, where many of the, the, the patriots were training to fight the British, so on and so forth. There's many, many other ones. And here's pictures of just what I think is unique. America's natural beauty. Teddy Roosevelt, again, trying to promote that and make sure that everybody has the ability to see what America has to offer. Not just industrialization, not just agricultural growth, but look at America's natural beauty. And here's a picture of Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders in Spanish-American War, which we will talk about next chapter. All right, guys. Oh, finally, last one. National Reclamation Act. Government would choose how water was distributed. So obviously drinking water, making sure that this water is per, uh, provided for the people to obviously drink and for irrigation, making sure that the crops are grown and that water is directed to provide and you know, obviously uh, really help with the, the farming, the agriculture. And then finally, we'll get to it uh, when we get to really the end of the roaring 20s into the Great Depression. Power generation. Government built dams and generated power to help with industrialization, to help build and spur more, um, more populated areas all throughout the frontier of the United States. Okay, so the Nacro National Reclamation Act, providing water to people, <clears throat> helping irrigation for agriculture, and power generation as the United States is standing out, really expanding out into the frontier, and in order for the United States to stay modern, stay up to date. Uh, stay competitive with all these other countries that are advancing at this time. So modernization. All right, guys. So again, make sure you guys complete the uh, political cartoon for today. You'll see that in assignments under modules, right? And you'll see the assignment at the bottom. It's just called a trust buster political cartoon. And then stay, stay, uh, uh, stay up to date with Canvas. You'll see an ideal school UDHS project. Okay. Again, I want you to record your presentation. You do not have to be in it, just your slides. I'll talk about that more tomorrow's lesson. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. We'll see you later.